Hi there. Over the last few days, I've been working on over 200 art styles that you can download for free and use with your stable diffusion. In today's video, I'll show you how to install them and make the best use of these art styles. These art styles work with both Forge UI and Automatic 11.11. They should be nearly identical on both, but I'll demonstrate how to do it on Forge now. Navigate to your Stable Diffusion installation folder and locate the Web UI folder. Inside, look for a file named Styles, CSV. It should be CSV, not CSS. Rename that file to something like Old Styles. I'd include a link to the new Styles file on Google Drive in the comments. If you visit that link, you should see something like this. Download the file and place it in your web UI folder. That's all for installation. Now the new styles are installed and you can restart your stable diffusion. You can find all the new art styles here. Let me demonstrate how styles can be useful and save you time. I'll start with a simple prompt such as cat and naturally you'll get a boring image like this. Now, if you navigate to the styles, you'll see how I've organized them into main categories, making it easier to find. Additionally, you can search for them there. So let's say I choose the portrait cinematic style and generate the image again. As you can see, the photo now looks much better. To remove a style, simply click on the tiny X icon. Let's try another style, like pet photography. As you can see, what a style actually does is add extra words after the main prompt, which in our case is cat. These extra words help guide the AI to that particular art style, and it also adds negative prompts. If you click on the Apply All Selected Styles to Prompt button, it will clear that art style and add all the prompts in the prompt area. So now you can edit that prompt the way you like it. Maybe you don't like some words in it, and you can simply remove them or replace them with something else. If you click on the Edit Styles button, you can select a style from the list or search for its name. Once selected, you can view the positive and negative prompts associated with that style. This allows you to permanently delete the style if you want, or you can remove or add more words to the positive and negative prompts. Once you're happy with your changes, hit the Save button. The nice part is that you can easily combine multiple styles. For example, if you have the Fine Art style combined with Low Key, you'll get something dramatic like this. Use this button to clear all art styles. Let's talk a little about the photography category. If you type photography, you can display only those styles. As you can see, I've, I've added quite a few here, so you can have fun playing around. Let's try a fantasy portrait of a cat, and you'll get a nice cat like this. One style that has been useful to me is one for mock-ups. For example, I can use a prompt like a cat wearing a white t-shirt, and you'll get a cool image that you can use to put your designs on. Maybe you need a, a poster on a wall or something. You can do that too. You can also have a person holding a sign, but there you might encounter more errors on the hands. Food photography can also produce nice results. Maybe you want a delicious chocolate dessert. Microscopic is an interesting style, but it depends on words. For example, skull worked most of the time, but for a cat, it didn't make it microscopic. I like to combine microscopic with fantasy to get cool images. It can also be combined with macro to get close-up clear details. Experimental is an interesting one. It mixes things in the images, but if combined with fantasy and cinematic, it can create awesome results. Another nice style is using long exposure to get those nice light trails in your images. Moving on to the second category, which is painting. As you can see, if you search for painting, you can find a few styles that I thought could be useful, from old traditional to more modern and fantasy or cute. Try them all and see which style you like the most. You can get unique styles if you also combine them with other styles. Moving on to the next category, which is illustrations. Here in the illustrations category, I've added different illustration styles, such as cute kawaii style. 
Many times I need a character that is on a white background, so I created a few styles to provide illustrations on a white background, making it easier to cut the background. Additionally, stickers are quite popular, so I've tried to add them to a solid color background instead of white, making it easier to remove the background. You can also find a few more styles like game art and fantasy that can be quite useful. Drawing styles are also looking quite good. You can experiment with pencil drawings, coloring pencils, graphite, uh, pastel, um, and create caricatures or technical drawings. I've always liked to draw, but you know, since using AI, I draw less each day, probably because I'm trying to do my job faster, but uh, the competition is big and it's hard to keep up with everything if I draw like I used to, spending hours on sketches. Now, you can find a sketch that you like and just improve it in your style. 3D renders are also my favorite because they can generate some clean images. For example, I have this, this style for cute cartoon characters, so if prompted for a girl, uh, I get a really clean image like this. You can upscale it uh, to make it even bigger just using this button. How cool is that? This button takes the settings from Hires Fix, so make sure you have the right settings here before clicking that button. This is what I use. There are about 20 uh, 3D render styles you can play around with. You'll get better results if you prompt something that can be made in that style. But you're free to experiment and combine styles. That's the beauty of AI. It's really good at getting clear images if they're close-up portraits or objects, but it can struggle when things are far away, complex, or overly detailed, like leaves and grass in the distance, intricate ornaments, and so on. The styles can produce nice results, but it depends on what you ask from it. It's not perfect because the models are not perfect, so these styles can help get some results faster and in a certain style, but they don't work miracles. The vector style was uh, requested in the Pixaroma community. Obviously, it's not real vector. It just looks like vector, and since the shapes are more basic, uh, it can be easier to vectorize. Uh, coloring book pages can turn out okay if they're not too detailed. Um, the flat art style can also uh, create some some nice results. Um, if the colors are too old-fashioned, you can add modern colors in the prompt. You can try to create um, icons, characters, or objects. Line art is similar to a coloring page, so if it's not too complex, it can work okay. As for logos, it's not so good. Dolly3 from ChatGPT can do a better job if you want to make logos, but you can get inspiration for logo ideas. Lastly, for the silhouette style, the one with cute silhouettes is my favorite, even if sometimes it makes line art instead of a silhouette. Moving on to the design category, with the avatar style, you can create some nice avatars for your social media. Uh, the icon design styles also work okay. I suggest generating a lot of versions and picking your favorites. The rest of the design styles that usually involve text obviously can't provide ready-made designs. However, you can get inspiration from them. For example, if you generate a menu or a flyer, you can find one with a nice composition. You can generate individual elements like a, an apple on a vegan menu or something similar. Pick the color and follow the layout. So from having no idea where to start, now you can generate some ideas really quickly and design the parts manually that involve text and clear design. Fashion styles can be used standalone, but I prefer to combine them with other styles like photography, painting, or fantasy. Um, with over 200 styles available here, uh, imagine how many combinations you can make to uh, get even more unique art styles. It just takes a few clicks, and it saves me a lot of time when I'm exploring new ideas. For the art category, I gathered a collection of some popular and some less popular but useful art styles you can use. You really need to test them all when you get some time. It's fun and can produce some nice results. And of course, you can combine them with other styles like photography or vector to get exactly the result you are after. In the craft category, I've included anything that involves working with objects from sculpture to laser cutting, embossing, woodwork, metalwork, and leatherwork. For crafters and artists, this generation can really inspire you from generating sculptures from different cultures to uh, paper cut ideas and ceramics. 
Right now, I'm working with Papercut and 3D layered laser cut projects, and uh, AI can generate some really cool ideas to get my brain flowing with the right ideas. It's better than Pinterest because I get access to things that haven't been invented yet. I've put a lot of effort into creating these styles in, in this video. I've tried to condense all the information into around 10 minutes. All I ask in return is a like or a comment. If you have any questions, you can join the Pixaroma community group on Facebook. Thank you and have a great day.